another black and white photography vlogcast. And today I have with me um, Mr. Lee Walker. He just uh, purchased a monument camera probably, oh, what, about six or seven months ago, Lee? Is that, would that be right? Seven, I think eight? we're right about uh, nine months, back nine in late months. January. Okay, super. And uh, I think it's fantastic. He specializes in film. Yes, film. Film has not gone away, ladies and gentlemen. Film is here to stay. I can tell you, I've gotten back into film. And I was talking to Lee a little bit about that. Um, and uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, I think the slogan is uh, slow down and shoot. Uh, too many times uh, we get a digital camera in our hand and because everything is throwaway, we don't even, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll click off a hundred shots and not even know what we shot. So with film, that is not the case. And so uh, Lee, how are you today? It's a beautiful day. Any, uh, any day in a camera shop is a good day. Any day in a camera shop. So Tell us uh, what made you venture into, um, you know, getting the, uh, you know, getting the, uh, or, or buying into the, or buying the shop. I know the shop's been there a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, I suppose it was a, a little bit accidental. We um, I had a career in uh, computer software, though I've been a photog in photography, particularly film, my whole whole life. But uh, you know, Monument Camera has been around Tucson as an institution here for like forty five years. And uh, the previous owner, uh, kudos to him for keeping it going. And really, the, the last remaining uh, camera store in Tucson, um, and he was going to retire this summer and close the shop. And I happened to be stopping by the store uh, about a year ago, or last December, and um, it just kind of came up. I had been, uh, I'd left the corporate world, the corporate world, had been teaching online, and, and I was also buying and selling cameras, uh, you know, uh, on my own and uh, really into medium format. And anyway, I uh, got talking to him and then sort of the, the thought came up, what would it take to you know, keep monument camera around? Because we were, those of us in the photographic community were a bit disappointed. We were not disappointed. We were a little sad that monument camera was uh, you know, the last uh, vestige of uh, particularly so, analog film was going away and uh, wanted to keep it open. So one thing led to another and, uh, and here we are. Yeah, analog is not going away. There are a lot of uh, YouTube channels devoted to it, as you probably know. Yeah. And uh, I do, I intersperse some of my digital stuff with the film stuff. And um, people, you know, are, are still interested. A fellow by the name of Matt Day does quite a bit of film photography and uh, a couple other people that I can think of offhand, but there are certainly more of those. So, you purchased the shop about nine months ago, and uh, it it looks to me like you rearranged it quite a bit. Uh, we did. We uh, we turned about a, th a third, about thirty percent of it into a multi-purpose space um, uh, to really expand uh, the community and the people we bring in. Uh, we we created basically a gallery slash studio slash classroom. And then we reorganize all the retail space and uh, really been growing the, the services and, and the inventory quite, quite a bit. Uh, so we want to make it a place where you come and, you know, you kind of want to hang out for a little while. I, I think that's a great idea. I, uh, when I went in there oh, a couple of weeks ago, you've got quite a few uh, analog cameras. I mean, uh, how many would you say you have in stock now? <laughs> Well, one thing we did is we moved what we'll call the collectibles and we moved them all into one place and actually what would have been the original film cabinet that held all the film that uh, Monument Camera sold 45 years ago. And we created what we call our, uh, our classic camera corner and uh, people stand there and reflect and they take pictures of it and a lot of people say, oh, that was the first. I remember my grandmother camera, that's it right there. And so that's kind of our collectible. Then the rest of the stores the uh, there's a there's a, at least a few hundred more analog cameras that are functional and and uh, for sale and and uh, displayed and the, there's the regular retail section. Now, do you also uh, are you also on eBay? Uh, we are. We um, are 
are, are starting to grow that. There's not a lot up there, but uh, as part of our, our growth, we want to, um, you know, because it's clearly, it, it's pretty obvious that there's some things, some products that are online sales uh, and some things that are, that, that are for in the store when people walk through the door. So we're getting better at distinguishing what those, you know, those that are online, those that are in store. Now, I purchased a couple of Japanese cameras, and uh, J- Japan was pretty big in the uh, the Zenza Bronica, which is, I've got like three of those now, and that uh, I told uh, Lee I've got the Leica, or the Texas Leica, which is this big Fuji thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, from what you've seen, um are you seeing a, a lot of sa- more sales in medium format and 35 millimeter? What, uh, you know, what, what kind of, where's the, where's the volume being driven typically? One of the things I've been kind of surprised by in the last nine months is just really the diversity of, I mean, we don't discriminate. We, we like cameras of all times, new and old and, you know, digital and, and film. So there's, but there's definitely, there's, there's definitely a, a, a trend I would say with the 20 somethings toward, um, you know, toward 35 millimeter, you know, analog film, there, there's, that's, that's definitely a trend in the industry. You can, you can see them coming through the, the door and there's an enthusiasm as they're reaching for something that's kind of missing. They all shoot digital for some reasons, but when they want to express themselves, I mean, we're definitely seeing a trend. And then there's kind of a natural, I see this natural then migration toward medium format, which is, and kind of one of my specialties and we're really trying to grow that part of the business. Right. I, I think that's going back to my early days, you know, I started out with 35 and then progressed to medium for, um, format and then progressed to four by five. It seems like you just keep walking up the ladder. You do. So, yeah. And, um, but besides the cameras, you also have quite a bit of darkroom supplies, right? We do. We carry um, we carry dark, Il, mostly Ilford darkroom supplies, some uh, Kodak, and then we have some uh, vintage darkroom products. You know, easels and uh, uh, you know, Philip found developing tanks and tongs and and uh, so vintage and and new stuff. Yeah, and do you carry like the plastic uh, the containers and so forth that you put the chemicals in when you measure mm-hmm. and that kind of thing and. Mm-hmm. We don't actually have a lot of those, but I think we need to start carrying. You asked about it, and uh, we do get regularly asked about that. But, uh, oh, okay. But we, uh, again, we get a lot of stuff to the door. that We buy, you know, we carry new stock, and we also have, uh, you know, used, a lot of used item, even in the darkroom side. And you've got paper. I saw paper there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you've got, uh, you've got tripods there. Tripods. Yeah. Uh, some lighting, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lens accessories, ND filters, lots of different kinds of filters, caps. Uh, and if I'm correct on a lot of the lenses that you have there, I mean, they can be used like Nikon lenses. And you got to correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, if you go back to the old Nikon F100, for example, um, that can use some of the old, uh, I mean, even the newer lenses can. I mean, it can flip flop back and forth, can't they? Yeah, particularly with Nikon, uh, you, you know, you got a lot of the compatibility from the 50-year-old lenses onto their, I mean, a guy was in here the other day with Nikon's highest uh, highest end pro camera, and he had this uh, 1978 uh, 300 millimeter, you know, 2.8 lens on it, you know, they, and they worked amazingly well. So that's, that's certainly a trend as well of... Uh, both using specifically for Nikon because they're pretty compatible of using the old glass, which is remarkable and it's awesome. And it's, you know, relatively inexpensive compared to, to new things. Plus we have other people that are adapting. So they mostly, I, I would say the Sony crowd does this more than anybody. They, they've got their Sony E-mounts and they put adapters on and they shoot the old glass, the old Canon FD and the old Nikon and old Minolta. So adapting to a, uh, Adapting old lenses to new bodies is a, is a pretty big thing. We carry those adapters too. Okay. So the, so, yeah, that's right. The Sony people don't have a lot of legacy. So, 
they don't have the legacy that Canon and Nikon have and Fuji and uh, a lot of a lot of other cameras. But when I was in the store, you were telling me about this new um, endeavor, and I believe it was you were working on the the darkroom side. And I think the listeners are going to be fascinated to hear about that because I think that is going to that that's going to get people back in the dark room. What, so what are your plans? Well, we do get a lot of interest in a public dark room. We're, we're not in a position yet to do a public dark room. You know, we just don't have quite enough room uh, just yet, but our, our intent is to, um, well, we have, we do projects, particularly like large format projects for which we'll be uh, using the dark room, but also our workshops, which when we kind of get a little further through COVID, um, We'll have workshops that'll usually you know, last, um, you know, probably uh, maybe three weeks, a few, um, you know, like a few hours, three weeks in a row. And uh, we'll be doing alternative processing classes. So we'll be doing wet plate collodion with our big, uh, large format cameras. We'll be doing regular silver gelatin type of dark room. So initially our dark room is going to be associated with the workshops that we have, not, uh, not necessarily an open public dark room just yet. Okay, so so somebody you know you might have two or three people in there doing a workshop. That's that's what you're sort of. In other words, you sign up to do a workshop. It might be two or three people, and you'll take them through the the. Are you going to do palladium at all? Yeah, um, we as part of our uh, the, the alternative processing class, we'll probably do you know cyanotype and Van Dykes and palladium, and we might we'll probably have a separate wet plate uh, collodion you know tin type class. Uh huh. Wow, that's uh, that, that is. I mean, Tucson could become become the hub of. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe analog photography. It'll sort of <laughs> you know drift back. Uh, Tucson's got a rich heritage of uh, of uh, photographers, and uh, you know, uh, I I I think that's great. I think, and I think, I believe the only place now that you could really do anything in a class like environment is over at uh, Pima Community College, you know, when you can get into the classes that they have or if they're available. And then the other dark room, I believe, which was uh, downtown would burn down or something had a fire. And I don't think they're yeah. ever going to create it. Is that right? I mean, so it's just you and Pima Community College. Yeah, Pima's got a really, uh, they've got a, a traditional dark room, and they, they actually have a, a dedicated alt processing dark room and a really, a, a really well, highly regarded class. And it's actually in the, through the art department, it's, but it's alternative processing, and you go through all of the, uh, you know, the old, you do palladium and, uh, and gum and all kinds of things. But uh, okay. so we want to, yeah, we want to do a little bit of that and, uh, and provide an, another outlet because it's the demand is definitely there. We, we feel it, we, we see it. Uh, people people want that <laughs> yeah you know everybody talks about the first time they saw a uh, dev or a print come up in the developer that's the first thing they'll say yeah that was magic magic and i think you're about ready to create some more magic over there at uh, monument camera i think i think your efforts are are uh, are are uh, a commendable and you know being an old analog guy and still doing analog uh uh it'll be interesting to see how you take off and i know the club camera of tucson has reached out uh to you and what i will do is i will uh, send a copy of this youtube video over to them and uh because i know some some of the digital people there over the last five or six years have migrated over to uh analog in other words, they may still do digital, but analog has become another part of their repertoire, the camera repertoire. So um, I think they're going to, you know, really like to know that you're there and then you'll have your dark shop, uh, dark, excuse me, dark shop, <laughs> workshops, not dark <laughs> shops, workshops. And I, I think they're going to really, really enjoy that. So um, I'll put a link at the bottom to your uh, to monument camera. Um, I, I, I urge everybody, whether you want to get into analog 
or not to stop in over at Monument Camera here in Tucson. Or if you're not in Tucson, actually this podcast or vlogcast really gets out to the world. If you're stopping by the Tucson area, you've got to stop in and see the collection and the, and the cameras that he sells. I think you'll be You'll be impressed, as I was. So, uh, Lee, I certainly appreciate you for being on the air today. It was really good. Very welcome. We uh, love cameras, love to talk about them, love to uh, use them, and and uh, just enjoy people coming in. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll put all the information down below, and it's Lee Walker we're talking to today. And, Lee, thank you very much. Good luck to you, sir. Very welcome. Thank you.